Okay, so you probably already know what we're going to talk about today. On today's video, guys, I am going to talk about periodontal disease in relation to diabetes and does gum disease cause diabetes or does diabetes cause gum disease? So today, guys, we are going to talk all about dental care. What is gum disease, also known as periodontal disease? What causes it? And of course, as always, what can you do to prevent it? So welcome to today's video, guys. My name is Diana Bitucci. I'll be your host today. Care about their teeth. I mean, it's the first thing that people normally look at when we talk to someone because it's the most visible. Everyone kind of pays attention to your mouth. So of course we want to keep our teeth healthy because we only get one pair and it's not like, you know, our adult teeth, we can't replace them. Well, we can, but not really. So guys, let's get started. We know diabetes is a disease that affects every single organ in your body. When the blood sugar levels are too high, it can affect the blood vessels that feed your organs, such as the eyes, the heart, kidneys, and of course your mouth as well. Our teeth also need nutrition to maintain their health, so therefore we have to feed them, guys. Periodontal diseases are infections of the gums and the bone that hold the teeth in place. So there'll be all of this around guys that we are referring to. When patients have uncontrolled diabetes, so when their blood sugar levels are high and they are maintained at a high level, then we know that it can have a negative effect on our bone health. Diabetes causes the blood vessels to change. They become more thickened actually, therefore the blood flow cannot go to where it needs to go in pairs and it slows down the flow of nutrients. This reduced blood flow, it can weaken the gums and the bone, and it puts us at higher risk for developing infections and of course leading to gum disease um, and different types of severity of gum disease. Higher blood sugar levels also promote growth of bacteria, which can cause gum disease as well. And vice versa, actually guys, uh, gum disease can actually cause higher blood sugar uh, levels as well. So just a fun fact, they, they realize that patients who are non-diabetic, who do have gum disease, actually have higher blood sugar levels than people who do not have gum disease. Even though they don't have diabetes, their blood sugar levels were higher than those people who did not have gum disease. So over time, higher blood sugar levels, of course, can lead to prediabetes and diabetes. Uncontrolled diabetes makes you more prone to gum disease, but we also know that gum disease for other reasons, maybe if you're a smoker or you don't take good care of your, your oral health, then of course that can actually cause the diabetes to happen as a result. And I mentioned smoking, guys. We know that smoking is harmful. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's millions of studies and there's no exaggeration there, millions. Um, that we know that obviously smoking is very harmful for our dental care. It's harmful for everything, but especially our teeth and our oral health. People who are diabetics and also smoke, they're at much greater risk. I mean, much, much greater risk for gum disease than people who don't have diabetes and are smokers. So of course, I don't condone smoking. I think everyone should try to quit smoking, at least reduce it until you can get to zero cigarettes per day. But if you are diabetic, especially smoking should be out of the question, um, just because obviously it places you at much higher risk for everything else, including gum disease probably wondering, well, how do I know if I have gum disease? So there are a couple of symptoms that can be red flags, of course, uh, that should warrant for you to go to your dentist, although you should go to your dentist regularly anyways. Uh, but if you are experiencing the symptoms that I'm going to talk about in just a minute, then of course you probably want to make an appointment as soon as possible and go see a dentist so you can take care of it because we know that the earlier we can take care of a problem, usually the better the outcomes are. Some of the more common symptoms of gum disease include red or swollen or sore gums, you're bleeding while you're brushing or flossing, uh, receding gums, loose or separating teeth, persistent bad breath, dentures no longer are fitting the way they should, if you have pus between the teeth and the gums, 
and a change in the bite or jaw alignments. These can all be um, some of the signs that you may have gum disease. Normally you want a dentist to diagnose gum disease. They normally will go over your history. They will ask about the medications you're on. If you are a diabetic, you definitely want to let your dentist know that you are a diabetic. And um, every, everyone should know that you are a diabetic as far as your medical team goes because there are certain things that we look for when patients are diabetic um, that they can be more prone for. So we don't routinely ask certain questions to a non-diabetic. We would with a diabetic because we know that they are at higher risk than someone who doesn't have diabetes. For that reason, your whole medical team, your eye doctor, um, obviously primary, endocrine, everyone should be um, working together to manage all aspects of your health. Uh, but a dentist is just as important, guys. So you definitely want to let your dentist know. And you want to let them know if you're well controlled or if your blood sugars are running higher. So generally, you want to let them know what your A1C is. They can have a better idea of why you're experiencing certain symptoms. There are different stages of periodontal disease. They are grouped based on the amount of inflammation you have and the amount of breakdown that you have going on with your gums and your teeth. One of them would be gingivitis, and gingivitis is the mildest form of periodontal disease. And the, you know, the gums tend to be swollen, red and tender and it makes them bleed more easily on daily cleanings and flossings and of course um, you want to make sure that you're seeing uh, your dentist so they can take the proper precautions and of course helping you manage this and then there's mild or moderate periodontitis and this is pretty much untreated gingivitis leads to this where it becomes more mild or more moderate periodontitis at this stage obviously the periodontal pockets start to form this is when uh, gums pull away from the teeth causing small space between the teeth and the gums to deepen so this can cause early bone loss around the teeth dental care is needed right away obviously to prevent any further erosion and uh, gum damage and then moderate to advanced per periodontitis this is obviously the most advanced form and this can this can cause serious bone and tissue loss and deepening of periodontal pockets so this obviously can lead to very heavy bleeding and very bad breath and you know the teeth may be loose at this point and may need to be removed so of course um, you want to make sure that you're seeing a dentist for regularly anyways how is gum disease treated obviously I'm not a dentist they can do deep cleaning remove plaque uh, beneath the gums they might prescribe you certain medications if needed such as antibiotics and of course surgery if needed at that point um, to prevent further deterioration which can cause other health problems problems as well. My favorite part of the video is always talking about prevention because I love prevention meaning I want to prevent something before it even occurs. But outside of senior dentists, what can what you can do to prevent it is obviously brush at least twice a day. And you want to use a fluoride toothpaste, which I think most of the toothpaste now do have fluoride in them. You also want to brush your tongue as well every time you brush your teeth. So you get rid of all the bacteria that may be in your mouth that can obviously transfer over to your teeth. You always want to floss. I personally floss at bedtime every single night. You want to make sure you're doing this on a regular basis always rinse after you floss of course and I want to bring up one problem that patients always bring up and that is not a lot of people have dental insurance and I just want to let you know guys I know that that's a problem and financials can always be a problem with dental care getting a routine cleaning is actually so inexpensive you can pretty much spend less than you would on a lunch meal to get your, your teeth clean. So guys, we gotta prioritize. And so not to minimize the cost of dental uh, cleanings, but really guys, when it comes, I cannot overemphasize how important it is. So if it's something that you can spare the money and save it towards a cleaning, it's totally worth it. Oral health is so important. Whenever we have dental issues such as infections, our blood sugar spike, believe it or not, when we take care of the dental problems, then obviously we have better um, management of the blood sugar levels. So they kind of go hand in hand together, guys, for that reason, I cannot overemphasize the importance of routine cleaning every six months and uh, taking good care of your teeth and your overall oral health, guys. So um, comment below and let me know your thoughts. If you guys are enjoying my content, please consider subscribing and share this video with others. And I will see you guys all on the next video. Take care.